resurrecting my old A123 pack and combining it with super caps. So here we have my A123 pack out of its case on the bench. Um, there are some problems with it and I'll describe those in a minute. And there we have a single um, super capacitor here. And the intention is to um, buddy pack the super caps directly across the full pack. They won't be connected at the cell level. So I'm going to build a 50 cell block of super capacitors here. Uh, they may well be standing up like this. And uh, basically the whole super capacitor pack will be budded across the A123 pack. But going back to the A123 pack, um, there are some issues with it. Um, as a, it was, it was actually split at cell 25 here, and I've taken the cell connections out. I need to reconfigure it to work it with the um, Orion BMS. Um, and what I'm going to have to do, I think, is I'm going to have to have it as one block. I don't think I can split it um, properly um, because I can't actually physically get the cells apart when I made this pack years ago. I uh, glued them all together with contact adhesive and it's incredibly strong and you can't get anything in between them. There's no way I can get the cells uh, apart without damaging them. So I'm stuck with them in this configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the center split point and just join those two tabs together, uh, hopefully. And then that will give me the whole 50 cell pack in one block. That's not ideal, but I think, uh, remember, I'm working with an old pack. I'm trying to resurrect and repurpose. You'll be working, hopefully, with nice new leaf A123s and your uh, cells, and you'll be able to do something differently. Another issue which has cropped up is, um, I originally, I soldered all the uh, tabs together. The A123 cells have one tab of aluminium and one tab of uh, uh, copper. And I managed to solder all those together years ago, which is shown on my videos and pictures from years ago. Uh, but they're obviously suffering some sort of problem <coughs> on the um, tab to uh, bus bar interfaces because what I had done is I had soldered uh, bus bars onto four of the tabs to allow the split points and the contact points. And it appears that the aluminium um, interface or the interface between the aluminium and the copper bus bars is, is, is possibly failing. Um, so here, for instance, is an aluminium uh, is a bus bar connected to the aluminium tab, if I go quite close in here, you can see that, that the connection has failed there and the bus bar has come away from the tab and the solder's failed. So whether that's a dissimilar metal uh, reaction which has um, weakened that joint over time, so that's an issue that uh, I'll have to try and address on the bus bar points. Now there is a possibility I suppose that that interaction has also occurred uh, on all the other tabs where there's a copper tab joined to an aluminium um, tab and uh, obviously high currents and voltages have been throwing over the years but it's interesting to see that that's failed there so that's going to be a potential problem so I've got to try and solder to this tab again and I can't remember remember I can't take the cell out of the pack to do that so I've got to try and resolder the bus bar onto there and in the middle it's even more problematic because I have an aluminium bus bar here and I've got to solder onto there somehow when I can't get it out of the pack so I've got to put some insulating spaces down the side to keep the tabs away from the others. I've got to join it to this tab over here, which is the uh, uh, other tab in this particular block to make the one complete block. That's a copper tab, I think. Uh, this is an aluminium tab. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I'll probably use a very short length of copper um, flexible tape or something like that to join those together. But as this, hopefully this pack won't have to sustain incredibly high currents because hopefully all the all the major current assisting and regen will be absorbed by the supercapacitors uh, block. And they are, uh, I believe, they are, they are copper tabs at both ends. So they should be able to be soldered together or connected together without any uh, dissimilar, meta, dissimilar metal reactions uh, causing a problem. So they're both copper, copper at both ends. So that's where we are at the moment. Um, just assessing what to do with the pack. The BMS, uh, which you've been getting data from, is sat here on the bench. And as you'll probably notice now, there are some current, current reading is now 0 amps and there are some more realistic temperature readings. So I'll plug the current sensor in and the temperature uh, sensor wires. These are all just thermistors on the ends of those. Uh, so basically the BMS is just sitting there powered by a 12 volt power supply. And this is the uh, transmission device, which links to my Wi-Fi router. And that's basically pulsing out the data to the Wi-Fi to the cloud. And that's the data that you're able to access uh, through the Orion BMS website. So I'm still tinkering away 
um, but I have got some issues with the pack and the physical assembly of it and electrical assembly of it and I'm uh, still pondering on what to do so um, uh, I'm certainly open to suggestions as regards joining the aluminium and copper tabs I don't really want to start investigating these aluminium and copper tabs uh, to disturb them because they're going to be so difficult to fix in situ I'm hoping that they may uh, may be okay the BMS will probably detect issues fairly promptly it does have um, resistance measurement capabilities battery resistance so as soon as you start applying current to the battery and I'll start cycling it up and down I would imagine it will detect bad connections between the tabs and hopefully they'll show up um, but we shall see anyway that's where we are